In 1922, we see two guys running through a forest, desperately trying to evade an unidentified creature. It is revealed that three of their friends have already fallen victim to this creature, and now the two are struggling to outrun it. Unfortunately, their efforts prove futile, as they eventually get captured and killed. After a while, we see the creature's hand retrieving a wooden staff that the guys had dropped during their pursuit. The scene then cuts to the present time, and we are introduced to a high school student named Zoe Cladera, who has recently moved to Australia from the United States following her mother's passing. She is currently preparing a meal for her father, but she soon gets distracted when she receives a video call from one of her friends in Chicago, leading to her unintentionally burning the food. It appears that Zoe still struggles to grapple with adapting to her new life in Australia, due to which she often reminisces about her life back in the States. The next day, Zoe and her classmates prepare for a school trip to the National Museum. On the school bus, Zoe takes a seat beside a classmate named Owen Clark, who is a geek. Behind them is the handsome boy of the class named Javier Torres and his girlfriend, Caitlin Fisher. There is also a girl named Kaylee Liu, who is a bit quirky and doesn't socialize much. Upon arriving at the museum, they are welcomed by the museum in charge, Dr. Rawson, who guides them through the exhibits while providing informative commentary. As they explore the place, Zoe walks away from the group and enters a restricted area where Kaylee is already chilling. Soon, Owen joins them, and he is followed by Javier and Caitlin. The couple starts having some lovey devey talks, which annoys Kaylee and as a result, she tells them to keep quiet. This ensues a small argument between the two girls. While bickering, the same wooden staff from the opening scene falls on the ground on its own. Zoe picks it up, and the staff mysteriously illuminates, displaying five distinct symbols on each of their faces. Before long, Dr. Rawson apprehends the group and leads them to her office. Zoe inquires about the peculiar feature of the staff, to which Dr. Rawson explains that it bears an ancient symbol and was discovered by scientists centuries ago. However, these scientists mysteriously vanished before they could explain further about the staff. Furthermore, Dr. Rawson unveils another discovery, a cube with similar carvings as the staff. The group members, one after another, proceed to touch the cube, which then emits red light. Zoe initially hesitates but is swayed when she hears her late mother's voice coming from it, prompting her to do it. With everyone's hands on the cube, the entire group, including Dr. Rawson, is suddenly teleported out of the museum. After a while, they regain consciousness and find themselves in the middle of an unfamiliar desert. Feeling stranded, the students begin to panic, but Dr. Rawson reassures and advises them to head toward a nearby forest in search of help. As they venture deeper into the forest, they encounter an elderly man named Marduk covered in plants. Upon seeing them, Marduk declares that the time has arrived. He addresses Zoe as an earth child, while the rest as outsiders. The group doesn't understand what he's saying, but before they can talk further, they hear a roaring sound of the creature, which Marduk claims is of the guardian of the forest. Sensing that the guardian is getting close, the group runs away. A pursuit ensues, and Dr. Rawson is hit by the beast at first, causing her to be knocked into the ground. The guardian then turns its attention to the remaining students. At one point, Zoe becomes stuck in a tree, but just before the creature can get her, she is inexplicably drawn into the tree. A short while later, Dr. Rawson wakes up and discovers some elves playing with her. She angrily instructs them to locate the children, an order to which they agree. Here, it's revealed that Dr. Rawson is a sorceress who deliberately brought the children to this place to help her in locating the head of the wooden staff. Meanwhile, Zoe awakens in a beautiful, garden-like setting and finds Marduk in front of her. She also notices a peculiar symbol on her wrist, which Marduk identifies as the Earth symbol. Seeing her confused expression, he proceeds to clarify that she possesses the abilities of an Earth elementalist, just like himself. This means she can manipulate nature and facilitate the healing of others. Marduk then starts to recount a long-forgotten tale. He narrates how a sorceress once served as the guardian of the Tree of Knowledge, but tragedy struck her tribe with a devastating plague. In a bid to save her people, the sorceress used her powers, but in doing so, she became corrupted. Driven to madness by her newfound powers, Marduk and three other elementalists banished her from the Tree of Knowledge. Ever since, she has been relentlessly trying to breach the barrier guarding the tree. After saying all this, the old man implores Zoe to locate the head of the staff before the sorceress can reach it. Overwhelmed and confused by all this, Zoe departs and soon runs into Dr. Rawson. The latter finally reveals herself as the sorceress and refutes Marduk's story. She then asks Zoe for assistance in finding the staff's head, leaving her torn between whom to trust. Nonetheless, Zoe decides to prioritize finding her friends before delving further into these matters. Elsewhere, the rest of the group stumbles upon a location where they are confronted with a riddle. They come to realize that each of them is associated with a specific elemental power, 
Owen with water, Javier with air, Caitlin with fire, and Kayleen with ether. They attempt to solve the riddle using their respective abilities but are unsuccessful. Soon after, Zoe rejoins the group and explains that the riddle can only be unraveled when all the elemental powers unite. As a result, they combine their elemental powers and teleport away from the place. The group then reaches another part of the forest where they spot a little fairy, who has injured her wings. Recalling Marduk's teachings, Zoe uses her power to heal the fairy, enabling it to fly once more. After this, she proceeds to explain everything to the group, emphasizing the importance of locating the staff's head in the Tree of Knowledge, as it's the only way to save the world and to facilitate their return home. Convinced by her words, the group ventures deeper into the forest in search of the same. After a while of walking, they come across a humanoid entity who introduces himself as the keeper of the crossroad. He mentions that they cannot head forward without his approval. When Owen ignores his warning and takes a step forward, the keeper freezes him in place and causes him to vanish from sight. Javier follows suit and meets the same fate as Owen. Seeing this, Zoe begs the keeper to bring her friends back, but the latter asks them to give him something in return. Caitlin and Kayleen offer him some money, which fails to appease him, resulting in their dismissal as well. In a last-ditch effort, Zoe presents him with her late mother's bracelet, which touches the keeper's heart. Recognizing her pure intention, he returns the precious bracelet to Zoe and opens a pathway to their intended destination. Zoe then ends up in a snowy forest with no idea of where to go. Overwhelmed, she breaks down in tears. Moments later, Dr. Rawson shows up and again asks her to find the staff's head for her. Not long after, Zoe spots Javier, who guides her to the outskirts of the snowy forest. There, they meet a speechless woman with peculiar facial features, who is referred to as Weaver. She possesses a unique ability to create anything she wants and is currently creating grasses and trees. Zoe and Javier request her for help, to which she agrees. She then transports them to another location where they reunite with Caitlin and Kaylee. Turns out the latter two have been brought here by a guy named Unweaver. Upon realizing that one of their group members is still missing, Weaver creates a portal through which they see Owen being pursued by the Guardian. Zoe swiftly pulls Owen through the portal, and Weaver seals it just in time to prevent the Guardian from entering. That evening, the group sets up a campfire and discusses their next move. Zoe still hides the fact that Dr. Rawson is the sorceress. In the midst of their discussion, they hear some elves coming to get them. Due to this, they hastily depart and arrive at a place where all of them are slowly drawn into the ground. They then find themselves in a dark realm where they are confronted by their duplicate selves. These duplicates represent their inner guilt or fear, which try to persuade them to join their counterparts. Unfortunately, Zoe gets overwhelmed by her fear and guilt, prompting her to succumb to the persuasion of her reflection. After this, she accompanies it through a portal. Caitlin's reflection also begins to point out her guilt and fear, attempting to draw her into the portal. However, Caitlin understands its negative impact and destroys her duplicate self using her firepower. She then rescues her friends in the same manner, and even ventures into Zoe's portal to retrieve her from the negative world. After successfully passing another phase, the group arrives at a beach where they come across a coffin. Everyone believes that the staff is inside it but to their dismay, the coffin is empty. Just then, Dr. Rawson appears in a completely different avatar than a museum in charge. It is at this moment when Zoe finally discloses her true identity as the sorceress. She extends her apologies to her friends for hiding this fact, reasoning that she didn't know about whom to trust. Meanwhile, Dr. Rawson goes on to reveal that she has been bringing several groups of children over the years, hoping they would unlock the barriers that have kept her separated from the Tree of Knowledge. She admits to manipulating their lives and deliberately relocating all of them to Australia in order to regain her power and access the Tree of Knowledge. She further threatens the group, demanding their cooperation or else she'll kill them. Hearing all this, an enraged Kaylee opens a portal and invites the Guardian to confront the Sorceress. The Guardian enters and engages in a fierce battle with Dr. Rawson, providing the group an opportunity to escape through the same portal. But soon after, the Beast is also forced back through the portal. When Zoe stares at it for a while, she realizes that it is actually an Earth's child. This means the Guardian is one of the good guys. Zoe then uses her elemental power to soothe it, preventing any harm to the group. Just then, she shockingly discovers the staff's head stuck within the Guardian's abdomen. She then slowly extracts it, but as soon as she does so, both Zoe and the Guardian collapse to the ground. Following this, Rawson reappears and demands for the staff's head. When the students refuse, she cruelly electrocutes Owen and Caitlin. Moments later, Zoe rises to her feet and surrenders the staff's head to Rawson in exchange for the safety of her friends. After finally getting what she wanted, 
Rossin takes Zoe and uses the staff to breach the protective barrier, ultimately leading them to the Tree of Knowledge. There, they find Marduk who serves as the tree's guardian. Through their conversation, it is revealed that Rossin is none other than his sister. When Marduk comes in her way, Rossin shows no hesitation in killing him. Witnessing this, Zoe tries to use her healing powers on Marduk, but it's of no use. Before dying, the poor man imparts an important message to Zoe, urging her to let go of everything. As Marduk passes away, an enraged and determined Zoe utilizes all her powers to destroy the Tree of Knowledge. Rossin hastily enters the tree to activate her powers, but before that, the tree detonates, claiming her life and bringing an end to everything. In the aftermath of these events, all the group members combine their powers to grow a new tree. Shortly after, Kayleen discovers the same cube, which they collectively touch to get transported back to their homeland. In the final scene, we see Zoe and Kaylee talking to each other at school. The movie ends as they realize that they still possess their extraordinary elemental powers. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching. You should check these recaps.